Dune Racers is a really odd racing game that came out late in the Super Nintendo's life cycle in December of 1994. It's a side-scrolling one-on-one racing game and in some ways reminds me of looking at a roller coaster from the side. Imagine Sonic 2 and make it a racer and you'll have something that resembles Uniracers. Uniracers was developed by Nintendo of America and DMA Design, which later became Rockstar North, known for their Grand Theft Auto series as well as Lemmings. Uniracers gameplay revolves around two unicycles racing around a 2D environment. The speeds reached in this game are incredibly fast, often making it difficult to see what you're doing, especially when you're switching directions multiple times in some races. The color of the track can be a warning of things coming up ahead. If you see the roads suddenly become red, you need to jump, because odds are there's tar up ahead that'll slow you down. There are multiple ways of being slowed down. The main one is not pulling off a trick and falling on your seat. The other is the tar that you'll find in some of the levels. In order to speed up in this game, you need to perform tricks, which can be done while you're in the air. The R and L buttons allow you to rotate in the air, and this allows you to stick your landings by not landing on your seat. There are nine groups of races with five tracks in each. Most of the levels are races that will either have you doing laps or do a sprint style race. In each of the five races, there's also one trick attack level where you need to perform a certain number of tricks to pass the level. These levels are usually set up to give you enormous speed and enormous amounts of air so you can do plenty of tricks. Once you pass the bronze difficulty, the difficulty ramps up quite a bit and you'll see your opponent constantly performing tricks to get faster than you. Bronze is a walk in the park, but once you start playing silver, it really cranks up the difficulty to the next level. Graphically, the game is fairly bright and colorful, and the sprites are fairly well animated, but the environments are seriously bland. Other than the actual tracks, all you have is the same repeating backgrounds that aren't really high detail or made to look like anything. There's also way too much gray in the menus, which just adds to the game's blandness. The game has a fairly large roster of unicycles, but honestly I can't see any difference between them other than the aesthetics. The game also features a split-screen two-player mode where you can do the races from the single-player game with two players. Back when this game came out in 94, I remember there being a lot of ads for it in Nintendo Power. I rented it, and it never really clicked with me. Most of the time, everything's moving so fast, it makes it hard to get a grasp on what's going on more often than not. Shortly after the game's release, DMA Designs was sued by Pixar for having unicycles that looked too much like the one in their film, Red's Dream, which is a four-minute short film about a unicycle released in 1987. As a result, DMA Design was no longer allowed to create any more Uniracer games, and Nintendo, as the publisher, was no longer allowed to print any more cartridges, limiting the run to only 300,000 carts produced. According to PriceCharting.com, Uniracers is currently worth about $10. While having a limited run of 300,000 carts may sound like it might be something rare, many games of this era sold around that many games, so it's not really that rare at all. Uniracers is worth checking out for its relentless insanity, however, once you start getting to the more complex levels in the game, the game really loses me, and quickly loses its appeal. If you find it for an affordable price, it might be fun to pick up, because you'll know that you'll own 1 in 300,000 copies, and that's kinda cool to know.